Check this shit out. All right, Swamp Thing. I'm a huge dork for all things Alan Moore, and his run on Swamp Thing in the 80s is still one of my favorite comic book series of all time. I vaguely remember the awful Swamp Thing movie, directed by Wes Craven? Whoa! As well as the USA live action series. But what was the NES game based on? Well, apparently it was from the animated series, which lasted five episodes. Five episodes! I thought Fox's Peter Pan and the Pirates was a thin premise for a television to video game conversion, but Swamp Thing the animated series wins the grand prize. No wonder nobody played this game when it came out. The story is the basic Swamp Thing plot, where Alec Holland is developing this plant serum, Dr. Nightmare Testicle pops in to steal it, and Holland's lab is bombed into oblivion. Man, not enough NES games start with your character being burned alive while running out the front door. That rules. After he leaps into the muck outside his shack, the serum transforms him into Swamp Thing. If you've ever heard of Swamp Thing for the NES before watching this review, then you're probably already prepared to find out that it's a bad game. Horrible. It's got all the usual signs of a awful platformer, murky graphics, swamp-like even, screechy soundtrack, boring levels, and ambiguous sprite designs. All that and so much more! First of all, Swamp Thing walks so slow. I kind of like this idea because in the comics he does move and talk especially slow, but in a video game there's nothing more annoying than trying to avoid enemies at a snail's pace. If you jump, Swamp Thing moves much, much faster, so obviously it makes more sense to just jump everywhere instead of walking. However, the devil's compact you make by doing so is that you have to hear the same blunt spring sound over and over and over every time he pathetically leaps. It'll drive you crazy. The green giant can attack with his fists, but the hit detection is so bad that successfully doing so is way easier said than done. Alternately, coming within a Swamp Thing's width of an enemy will often cause him to get hurt. Seems fair. Eventually you'll get some green projectiles which make dispensing the enemies more manageable, but you've got a limited supply. Doesn't really matter though, because most of the enemies appear below you, and although Swampy can duck, he cannot duck and attack at the same time. Yep, it's one of those games where most of the bad guys are too low to the ground to hurt. Woof. That, coupled with the fact that almost every enemy cannot be attacked at all, makes Swamp Thing belong to one of my all-time least favorite video game genres, the Avoidathon. Instead of choosing to fight or jump around enemies like any other action platformer, the difficulty or impossibility of hurting anything means all you'll be doing is staying away from everything that moves. That is not a game. I can do that on my own by simply sitting still on the couch. The only time you actually need to fight is when the bosses finally appear, and man, they really took their foot off the gas with these guys. They all move so slow, and always in the easiest to approach, most predictable patterns. Each boss is a generic mutant dinosaur in these cutscenes, but then when you actually confront them they look way goofier, which is great, because I had high hopes for Dr. Demo, Weed Killer, and Skin Man? Skin Man. Was the name Epidermis Lad already taken? And by the way, Skin Man is actually really hard at first. Like I had no clue how to hurt him, and then I accidentally turned into these eyeballs and dropped swamp nuts on him by shaking these trees. What? Well yeah, according to the manual, there's various points throughout the game where Swampy can transform into various organic objects, like a flower, an apple, and a tire? That is absolutely something I wish I would realized before the last level of the game, as there's zero chance I'm going to play this again and find those secret spots. The platforming is rough, as it's never clear why you can or cannot make certain jumps, and there's also this weird delay thing where you try to leap but instead just slip off the ledge for no reason. Most of my frustration is that there are large sections where I cannot, after multiple attempts, figure out how to avoid taking damage. There's just not a large enough space to maneuver over or under enemies, no matter how perfect your timing is. I'm not above cheating, 
And for this, I constantly employ save states. And let me tell you, when you have that kind of control over how you play and the game still makes you want to chuck your controller, it is way, way too hard. The graphics are pretty terrible, especially considering this is a later entry in the NES library. I've absolutely seen way worse, but its greatest design sin is that in certain sections, everything just blends together. Like here, can you tell where I'm supposed to jump next, or even if I'm going to land on anything solid afterward? Worst of all, these stages just go on and on and on forever. I would not have expected for this to be such a large game, but wow, they really packed it in here. You'll probably spend a solid 10 minutes perfectly navigating one of these teeth cleanings of a level, only to take that last hit of damage and have to do it all over again. By the end, I was just begging for death, walking right into enemies without attempting to avoid them, and then I remembered I was trying to record footage for this video and just cheated my way to the end. What are the positives? Well, there's actually a really solid atmosphere to this game. Despite looking pretty bland, the environments are very clear and the dark color palette sets a foreboding mood to each stage, perfect for a horror game. I especially love little details like the shadow of these people looking out their windows, these inert mummies in the catacombs, and, hmm, well, that's it. The music is nothing special, but as I've heard way worse in games of similar quality, I'm gonna say it's good enough. There's not really much else to say about this. If you've bested all the kid cools and circus capers of the NES library, and you're looking for some more mediocrity, Swamp Thing's got all the generic levels, unfair difficulty, bland gameplay, and awful controls just waiting for you. Fun fact, it turns out the Swamp Thing game reuses the engine from The Simpsons, Bart vs. the Space Mutants, which now that I know that, I could have just started and ended the review with that fact. I can see it now, although it actually looks more like the atrocious Bartman meets Radioactive Man, but either way. Why on earth some game designer said, why start from scratch when we already got it perfect the first time with Bart vs. Space Mutants? We'll never know. Apparently in 2001, someone made a Simpsons sequel by hacking the Swamp Thing game to make The Simpsons Return of the Space Mutants, and if you're a true masochist, maybe you can be the first one to play it. Hey y'all, I make more videos every week over at patreon.com slash big ol' words, and I'm also streaming every Thursday here on YouTube, so come hang out. Until next time, thanks for watching.